Hello, I'm Chris from UserDoc, and I want to give you a quick little demonstration of UserDoc's uh, project wizard incorporating document upload. So I'll just go ahead and create a new project. So this is a, a facilitated wizard to help ask the requirements of what you're building. Um, so we're going to build a system called Atlantis, Atlantis uh, HMS. So it's a healthcare management system. Um, to, to manage uh, patient signups and for them to get insurance claims and so on. Uh, and we can, we can now type in a description about the project. So we can type whatever we want here. Uh, however, we can also upload documentation. So this might be like a, a product specification, a brief, or it could be a tender or whatever information that you have about the system. So we'll go ahead and choose this software requirement specification. Um, and I'll actually just show you here, uh, this is what the spec looks like. So it's been put together by a business and it's got you know lots of details about the software and the requirements and all that sort of good old boring stuff. And when we upload that into user doc, we automatically get a quick summary. So it lends us HMS, web-based healthcare management system designed to, et cetera. So it understood what was inside the document. Now let's continue on. What user doc is doing now is it's traversing through that info and figuring out the user types involved. So this system has a patient uh, and a little description about the patient and how they use Atlantis HMS. And it also has a receptionist and again, their, their fields. So it, it came back with two, which is the default, but I know from that, those documentation that there's actually another user type in there. So I can, I can say what it is, it's called a service provider. Um, and that's like a doctor or a nurse or whatever. And I can use this uh, generate user type to help fill in this information from our knowledge that I've uploaded. So I could alternatively not put in the name there. I could have just let it choose the next user type. But by putting in the name, I prompted the AI to help figure out that this is the, this is the end user that we want to add in. So now I've captured those two user types. We want to continue on. So user doc asks whether we want to scaffold this project using AI. So we could leave it here and we could go and enter the requirements ourselves and still leverage AI, or we can continue with yes, and it's gonna actually build out the, the, a great first draft of the software project. So I'll click this to continue. Now this will take a minute or a couple of minutes uh, to go and evaluate all the different features and it's gonna come back and show us what it's suggesting um, the, the features for this system are. Cool. So here are the features that user doc has suggested. So these come from the knowledge that we uploaded. So that functional specification and it understood the different user types. So patient receptionist and service provider. Uh, and these are the titles of the user stories or the features in the system. So we can click through of these and see like register, you know, it actually contains quite a bit of info. So the fields are uh, name, date of birth, continue, uh, and other information. We can change this here. We can edit this. We can say, um, you know, can log in with Google or whatever it is. Um, we can also add completely new ones here. So we could say, uh, I can't think of any, but you could add in a whole new feature. And you can of course remove ones that don't make any sense. So here we can go in and refer and ensure that, you know, uh, what we're about to scaffold aligns. And we can do that with the three different user types. They have different features depending on their um, relationship to the system. Uh, and once that all looks good, we can continue down and click next. So from here, user doc is gonna, uh, it saves the progress, but then it's gonna ask us some more information about um, those end users. So patients, receptionists, and service providers. What are their goals and what are their frustrations? So user doc doesn't just care about the technical features of a system. It needs to understand the, the reasons behind why we're doing this. Why are we building this? Who's gonna gain and why are they gonna gain? Um, and we can obviously type this in. Um, you might already have this information about your personas, but we can also let UserDoc's AI help us generate that. So again, we're using the, the, uh, the knowledge that we've accrued from so far in this process. And we understand that a patient, you know, their goal is to easily schedule appointments, communicate and, and communicate with a um, healthcare professional. Uh, frustrations, long wait times for appointments, difficulty tracking history, unclear communication, et cetera. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly um, scaffold out the, the goals and frustrations for these other two user types. And then we're gonna continue on the journey. So the next step we're asking, uh, UserDoc is asking us for an example, user journey. So a user journey is, you know, uh, usually involves one or more user types interacting with the system and it's a flow through the system. So it's like a timeline. 
And again, we might have these examples so we can just type this in, but I'm gonna get UserDocs AI to help um, create a good first draft of a journey. So it came back with the patient self registers. They log in, they schedule an appointment and receive a reminder. So all of this is grounded in the knowledge we've given it so far. This isn't hallucinated. Uh, on the day of the appointment, the receptionist checks in with the patient, service provider accesses the EHR, etc. So this is a pretty great journey that describes, um, it's probably the whole flow that I just, of the features that we just uncovered there. So that's the end of this initial elicitation. And now we're going to get UserDoc to go ahead and scaffold out uh, the, the requirements for the system and we can continue from there. So again, this takes, depending on the size of the project, this might take between 30 seconds or three minutes. It really depends on how many um, features there were. And here we go. So this is the main user doc interface. Um, so what we're seeing here is the project Atlantis HMS, which healthcare management system. And on the left-hand side, we see all the user stories that have been scaffolded for us. So it's gone ahead and created 62 stories um, based on the document upload information that we provided in the wizard. Uh, and and they're, they're the ones that we saw previously. So patient register, login, account recovery, and so on. Um, so here we're looking at the patient register story. Uh, as a patient, I want to register so I can access the healthcare information services provided by Atlantis HMS. And then we see the acceptance criteria, which is very detailed uh, requirements for what it would take to implement this feature. Um, so we see the form, you've got the fields on the form and you've actually got like the validation. So the types and whether it's required, username, password, etc. It then talks about, you know, a continue button. If we click register, validates the fields. Uh, accounts created if it's all correct and continues on to the login screen. And that's actually a link to another story. So it's created a flow between the system. So register takes you to login, login takes you to profile management, etc. We can also see on register that it uh, provide the option to log in with Google. So that was a little change that I made in the wizard there. I'll show you how we can edit it. So let's say for example, we want to change the patient register uh, and we don't want them to enter their insurance details on the registration screen. Um, and we want to say provide option to log in with Google. And I'm just going to say, you know, on click, uh, on click opens Google login, uh, window. <clears throat> and we can save those changes to this story. And we actually have a full version history here. So if I go back to the previous version, I can see that we removed insurance details. It's marked in red and crossed out and in green is the change there. So UserDoc is not just an AI generation system, it's a requirements management system that lets you manage the flow of requirements as they change over time. You can even revert back to this story or whatever you may need to do. We can create whole new stories here. So let's say, for example, um, we want to create, um, so uh, a, a patient can schedule an appointment. Let's say they want to share an appointment, appointment with, uh, <clears throat> with friend. I don't know why they'd want to do that. But again, we can type in this user story. So we choose the user type, we can type whatever we want here. But again, we can use UserDocs AI to intelligently generate a draft for us. So share my appointment with a friend through the system so I can keep them informed and get their assistance if needed. So that's exactly what I was wanting. So that's great. Um, again, I could have changed that. Similarly, I can get it to generate the acceptance criteria for this story. So this takes into account other requirements that already exist in this system. This isn't just using like chat GPT and making things up. As you can see here, it's come back and said, shows a share appointment option next to each appointment in the view upcoming appointments feature. And that's a link to that other feature. So on selection shows share appointment with the following fields. You can put in the email, phone number, optional message and a send button. Um, so again, this is, this is exactly what I was looking for. So the only thing I might change here is let's say um, we don't want phone number. So let's say it's just an email. Uh, if it's all correct, uh, it gets sent. Uh, I'm going to remove it by um, this phone number because I took out phone number. So it just sends it to an email address and then it takes you back to upcoming appointments. So perfect. That's great. So I've just created that feature in the system. Now, let's say, for example, uh, uh, this system is very large and it has lots of features and I'm starting to forget some information or I'm new to this project and I don't quite understand it. So I can actually ask questions. I can chat to the user story. So I can say, how can I schedule appointment? And I shouldn't have said I, uh, I'm gonna say, how can patient 
And I'm going to leave that spelling mistake just to show that uh, user docs AI can get around that fact. So yes, a patient can schedule an appointment by selecting schedule appointment option in the navigation menu and filling out that details. It actually links to the exact story. So I can click on that and it takes us to the story. So again, it's grounded in facts and you can cross reference that the information you're getting back from user docs AI actually matches your requirements. So we can go ahead here and we've, let's say we've built out all our requirements and I've used AI to help move faster. And I wanna get that into our um, implementation system. So let's say that's JIRA for project management. We've got user doc for requirements management and then we've got JIRA for the project management. Sending this information over to JIRA. It's as simple as up here, you go manage integrations, send to JIRA. So what that's doing right now is it's just created this little link here. And if I click on that, I can see that in the JIRA project that I just configured, it sent, it sent the story over. So it's got the description, a link back to user doc, the user story and the exact acceptance criteria. And if I make any changes in user doc, I can just simply resync them back over to JIRA and it works perfectly. So user doc is not just about user stories though. Uh, that's one part of it. it is requirements management, but it's also ensuring that everyone on the team who uses user doc and interfaces with it understands why we're using it. So let's look at the user types. So these are those three user types identified in the, um, in the wizard. Uh, so we've got patient here, and it describes what the patient, how they interact with the system. And it's also got some user personas. So Luna Martinez, 34, lives in Texas. We could have, we could have changed that in the wizard. We could have said that they're from Australia. Um, married with two children. It talks about the about. Uh, she's very busy job managing this marketing system. Uh, marketing team, sorry. Uh, her goals, easily schedule medical appointments. That would be one of her goals. Frustrations, long wait times. So you can see why Luna is a great end user of this system and why she would be a patient of Atlantis HMS. And you can add new, again, you can add more user types. You can easily add, um, you can add new, new personas, um, whatever you need to do here. Again, user doc is scaffolded out the draft version using AI, but many of our customers actually don't leverage their AI that much and just use it as a requirements repository. And thirdly, uh, we've got user journeys. So if user stories are the requirements and the features, user types and personas are who we're doing it for, user journeys are across, uh, across intersection of them both. So this is the one that AI created for us, patent, patient registration appointment workflow. And we can see here that Luna registers herself in the system, that's step one. She logs in, she then schedules an appointment with Dr. Sophia Martinez. So on, on step three of this journey, we see two personas are now involved. See Luna and, and Sophia Martinez. Uh, it describes a narrative flow as she uh, sets the appointment and the doctor accesses it in the uh, electronic healthcare system. Um, they, they order tests, et cetera, and then she makes the payments. So AI has scaffolded this to explain yeah, a, a good fictional narrative so people can understand why these features make sense in what context. And we can also continue to use user docs AI for that. We can generate other steps in the journey. So we can, we can obviously type them in manually, but we can also come back and say, you know, Luna reviews her lab test results involving these, uh, these different personas. So again, incorporating, incorporating user journeys with the different user types and personas in the system and the actual features and acceptance criteria. UserDoc is a great way to, to bring them all together and to clearly explain a system and leverage AI to help you move faster. Uh, you can, I showed you can obviously export that out to a project management system like Jira or Azure DevOps or many other systems. Um, you can also query information of it and you can export them as spreadsheets, uh, as Word documents or whatever else you need. So yeah, that was a quick little introduction of UserDoc's new uh, document upload feature and a broader overview of the other parts involved. Um, please get in contact if you want to chat. Thank you very much.